Hello, everyone. Wow, what a turnout. Um, welcome to the Flow, Flow uh, Automated Test session. And my name is Henry Liu. I'm one of the PM on the Flows team. And before we get started, I just want to quickly mention, please make your purchase decision based on the existing available functionality. So today, I have really three takeaways for all of you guys before you go. The first is that you have to test your flow. The second is that we now have a declarative way for you to create these automated tests. And third is very easy to do. So in summer 2022, we are starting, we're, we're, uh, we're launching the first time in Salesforce a low code and or no code declarative way for you to create automated testing within Flow. And this way, you don't have to use Apex anymore. You still can use it, but you don't have to. And you can manage and run all of your tests all at once, and you can deploy to production uh, with confidence. So you might be asking me, well, what is automated tests? So it, within, uh, the cell, uh, within soft software testing world, this is basically a way for you to compare the uh, expected outcome to what is actually, uh, you, what, what are the predictions that you have. And if it doesn't match up, then your test will fail. And, 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 uh, and previously, you have to do this with Apex code. But now, you can basically package up all the scenarios that you have, create a test for it, and run them all at once. So then this is a great way for uh, doing regression testing, because now you don't have to do that manually. So the second question that you may ask is, do I really need automated tests? And my answer is yes. Even if you only have, say, like two nodes here on the left, you still want to have a test, automated tests, because this is a way for you to capture the input. So then the next time you come back and want to do the test, you don't have to remember what those inputs are. Again, you can just run it. And this is also another way, easy way for the other admins that might want to know what this flow is doing to see what is the expected input and see what the expected outputs are. So it's a lot easier to understand what the flow is doing if you have a test. Now, if you have a, a flow that looks similarly in the middle like that, where there's multiple paths, you, still, you definitely want to have a t automated tests for this as well, because now you're T you, you want to test multiple scenario and within multiple paths, so you don't want to memorize exactly what is the input to go down which path. You just want to define it first and then run them every single time you want to test them. Now, if you have something like this on the right-hand side, you probably want to refactor your, your flow first. But if you can't, then you absolutely need your automated test because there's no human possible way for you to test all the different combination of the path that you have and do it consistently, consistently and repeatedly um, at the same time. So I know we are kind of short on time, so I'm just going to jump straight to demo to show you what this looks like. So here I am a flow builder, and I have a record trigger flow. So if I go into uh, the start condition, you can see that this is on a case record, and any any time that a record is created or updated, then uh, this this trigger will run. And down here, I also have an entry condition. This basically t uh, is a way for you to not always run uh, this flow every single time a case uh, is created or updated. So this is a way to scope that entry criteria down. and. As you can see, we actually have a brand new formula builder within this. This is actually pretty awesome. So if you haven't checked it out yet, go to our booth and take a look. You can select the resources. You can see all the functions and also the operators here. So it's pretty powerful. So here I have it set that any time a case status is closed, and also when a case status is escalated, then this trigger will run. So on the left hand here, when the status is escalated, all I'm doing is that I want to keep the is escalated Boolean field in sync with the status field, the, the pick list. So if it's not, then I will update that. If it is, I do nothing. On the right hand side here, this is the status. When the status is closed, then I want to send an email out to the contact 
but I want to make sure that if there's no email, then I don't actually send this email out. Um, if there is, then send an email. If not, then don't do anything. So I already have all these, uh, most of these paths uh, covered except for this email action part. So if you take a look at uh, view tests, you'll see I have three, three of these tests already. All of them are passing. And I just want to go and create a test for this particular path. But before I do that, I want to debug it first just to make sure that it is all working. So I can click on the debug button, make sure that this is on an update case. And I'm going to fill in, use, fill in the uh, entry criteria using this case object. And on the update, I want to make sure that there is a contact associated with this case. And also, uh, the status will become closed. So if I run this, you'll see that this went down the right path, and I, I got the right information. So everything seems like it's working. Now, I want to, I want to convert this scenario into a test so I can repeatedly test this exact scenario every single time that I deploy or every single time that I change something in this flow. So all I have to do is click on this convert to test button. And all that initial data that, that was captured in the debugger comes to here. So you can see that all of that came over. And then the update trigger data also comes over. So then all I have to do is just um, create a label for this particular test. So I'll call it case with a case close with contacts. And then the last thing I want to do is create assertions. So for th those of you who don't know what assertions are, these are basically a set of conditions for your test. So anytime that any of these conditions fail, then that means your test has failed. So these are basically like the um, expected value that you think that this particular uh, flow should be doing. So in here, um, I'm going to create three different assertions. The first one is that the case is closed. The second one is that this, the, um, the contact, that there's a contact. And then the third is that the email was sent. So to do that, I will type in record.status equal to close. Second is uh, record dot oops contact ID where's my ID there it is uh, is null equals to false and then the third is that this email action itself was executed, so it was visit equals to true. And all of these assertions, you can create custom failure message, so it's a lot easier to read your own assertions in the future if it failed. So here I'm going to just say uh, case contact, contact was not filled. Great, so then if I go back to the test, now I have a new one here. So I'm gonna run this and see what happens. So this is exactly what I was expecting. It goes, goes down this path, but actually I want to show you what happens if it is not working and it's not something that you're expecting. So I'm gonna go to the update trigger record and just delete this contact. So this test is thinking that you're going, going, you're going to go down this path, but now I have removed the contact itself, so it's not going to go down this path anymore. So if I run this test again, you'll see that it went down a different path, so that's, that's not what I expected. And the assertion itself it will tell you, hey, the case, there was no contact, and the third assertion wasn't even run. The reason why it didn't run is because the, the moment that you have one assertion fail, your test will immediately fail. So it's not going to evaluate, um, you know, continuing on. So here, I can just, you know, edit the test again to go back so that I, I can see that um, this is working again. Great. So then 
all I have to so now I have all the tests specified. So then all I have to do every time that I deploy or change this trigger is to run all the tests at once and make sure that all of them passes. Now you see that the second one actually failed. So it was passing before and now it's failing. So there's a couple reasons why your test could could be failing. One is that your data wasn't um, the, the testing data that you specified wasn't correct, or maybe the trigger itself is not doing what you want. Or third is that there's outside automation that can be conflicting with what you're trying to do here. So if, you, if I go into this detail, you can see that this is failing at this update case. And if I go into the detail, I'll see that the apex trigger there's an Apex trigger exception, and it says, hey, you need to fill in the escalated reason. So in this instance, there is a, there's someone that is creating an Apex trigger that you're not aware of. And what it's doing is that it's adding this condition saying, hey, anytime the case escalation is there, you have to have a reason filled in, or else it's going to uh, throw this error. So you have two options here. What either you pull in this this type of logic directly into your flow, or you can fix your uh, test test uh, sample data so then it can also abide by this rule. So I'm just going to change the data itself so it's easier for now. So I'm going to do that. Um, go into the initial trigger record. So then. If I go down to escalated reason, I just need to type something in this uh, mock data. So I'm just going to say uh, system is too slow. All right, so I'm going to go back and run all of the tests again and see if all of them passes. All right, so all of them pass, and so now you're ready to activate this flow and, and push to production if you want to. So that's all for the demo. So I'm going to go back to my slide. And I kind of want to just go through a summary of what we just learned here. Test automation is going to save you a ton of time. Um, you know, a lot of time is spent on regression testing. But if you can automate this, these testing, then you don't need a lot of people to do this anymore. You can automate it and just run all at the same time. And there's less human involved, so then there's fewer human errors. This will also reduce the cost because it's now a lot easier and faster to onboard other admins to, to know what this flow is doing. And um, so then you can you know, do these regression tests even though you don't have a lot of people. And also, hopefully, you'll see fewer uh, production issues as well. And you just saw in the demo, the last point here is that you can actually test things that are in the save order that's coming after the flow trigger. So it's actually testing everything. It's just not testing the things that are coming before the, test, the, the trigger was executed. So just want to make sure that you know the difference. There, there are you know, gaps that we have currently. And th right now, it is in beta for summer 2022. And in winter, we're targeting GA. And, we, and currently, we can only do create, update record triggers with immediate path. But, uh, but we want to add schedule path as well. Second point is that, um, again, it doesn't test anything upstream of this trigger, but it does test everything that is coming after the trigger itself. And lastly, the, uh, this is also um, SFDX metadata enabled, so that you can actually move your test from scratch score to sandbox to production if you want to. But for those of you that are ISV, we don't have packaging support just yet, so uh, you need to wait for that. So that's really it. Um, thank you for coming. And so tomorrow we have uh, more flow sessions, so please come check them out. And if you want to learn, uh, if you want to learn flow uh, with your own time, then feel free to go to our trailhead. And I'll be here answering questions on the side if you have any. And thanks for coming, and have a great rest of your day.